Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Um, as, as you probably saw from um, heard earlier on, um, I was drafted in um, quite a late date, so I will be skipping a few slides um, because I wasn't sure how much to put in there. <laughs> right. So where, where I'll start off before I even get to the agenda is let's try to sum up exactly where open source sits and, and a, a good analogy for it. So a chap called uh, David Galliel uh, wrote a while back, um, a lever long enough. In there he basically says, you've got these 100 ton uh, freight ships uh, which are moving along the seas and to get the ship to move left or to move right you have to have a huge rudder but if someone was just stood there pulling the rudder nothing would really happen so what's needed to actually move and make the change in direction is hundreds and hundreds of little pieces and to me that sums up how open source really needs to work it's a model that enables millions and millions of developers to actually work together um, all loosely connected in one way or another to actually make the change and the change that's needed uh, for the good um, of, of all software users. Um, so obviously, like I said, um, the agenda is probably longer than what I'm actually going to speak for, so don't be worried. Um, I know I'm in marketing, so this could go on for a few days, but I'll cut it down to 10 minutes. Um, so I'm sure a few of you are quite um, aware, aware of these two chaps here, Richard Stallman and Linus um, Travers. Richard was the first person, well, he actually put a GNU together which was effectively open uh, in a sense um, and probably at a time when computers were rare, were, um, rare should we say, is probably the right word for it. Um, he, he came on from uh, MIT, uh, which is a well-known university in the States, um, and his exact words were for what he tried to put together was to develop a sufficient body of free software. And it's that simple. So that was, his, that was his, uh, his message to the world when he actually came out of this GNU, was to develop something that everybody could, could work on and, and make something of. Uh, the next person who came into it was, uh, was Linus, or Linus, I've, I've always known. Um, he, in 1991, put together uh, the Linux and started developing the kernel. Um, and that's pretty much where it started. So from the work of these two is really where a lot of people can actually say open source started with these two gentlemen and sort of went along from there. So where's open source now from 1991 and 1983? Got 50 million plus users of some form of, some, of, of Linux and it runs on mission, crit mission critical systems, highly um, secure systems, so a lot of very big banks and, and government agencies are using this free software. Um, real time systems, so trading houses and other, and other big um, organizations such as that. And they're platform independent. So a way of keeping commercialized open software open is to make it open to everyone so anyone can link it into any of their current uh, solutions. So you don't have to get rid of this to add that. Um, and then you don't have to add this to join part of that. So, so it keeps it nice and easy to work with. Um, and what really these two gentlemen really did um, at the beginning of it was actually set the standard and set the bar for what an open standard and an open source solution should look like. So just a brief one on Red Hat. I'm not going to go into too much into it. Um, Red Hat was probably the first organization to actually take open source and turn it into a commercialized model. Um, growing very quickly, obviously, with the financial crisis, let's say it's helped a lot because you know, people are actually trying to move away from some of the other proprietary software, which locks them in and actually doesn't give them the flexibility to use the, the you know, educated in-house resources to turn the software into what they actually really need within their organizations. Um, we have pretty much opened in the region, it was about a year and a half, two years ago now, out in, out in uh, Dubai, Internet City, um, and I've only just taken this role on. Um, so I'll be moving, moving out here quite soon to, to evangelize open source um, with a bit more um, um, And we do have you know, a lot of clients in the region who have done well, and one of them, um, though today, the Qatar Exchange, so from here, um, won an award on Sunday at GTEx uh, for the best use of software in the banking industry um, in the region. So, so that was, a, that was um, you know, a good showing. So I'm not going to go into too much uh, detail on this slide, but what it really says is the estimated current software market is around $180 billion mark. Um, that doesn't really mean a lot to anyone, but the infra enterprise infrastructure market represents about $50 billion. Open source software has effectively come from zero as a percentage of that, and it's now moving up to, it's coming on to 10, 15, and coming up to 20% of that. 
um, which can actually be recorded um, within these organisations as an enterprise class, enterprise ready solution um, that CIOs and IT directors are actually picking up, looking at, choosing um, and bringing into their organisations. Um, so what, what that really shows is across the whole board you can see there there's every type of enterprise software from the front office, back office, middleware, operating systems, nowhere near all of it from Red Hat, it comes from a variety of vendors that we all work very closely with. Um, you can build an entire stack on open source from databases, um, working on the, on the server side with some of the bigger vendors there, uh, from the middleware, from the, from the operating system. Everything nowadays can actually be found in, a, in an open source environment. So, as you've probably seen on a, f a fair few slides um, already today, it really is a matter of there's an idea that everyone's trying to get to, and everyone from every region, from every country, who has an idea of how to develop is, is throwing their ideas in through, in, in through the kernel, um, and then the right ones actually get taken up by the, by the bigger software, um, by the bigger open source commercial vendors, um, and they commercialize it and take, and take that to market. So, at the end of the day, Red Hat has around 3,800 employees at the moment, um, the majority of who are engineers and developers, etc. Um, but in real life, the real developers are actually, well, probably the majority of you. So um, one of the gentlemen earlier asked about how um, JBoss is uh, given out as a, as a free software, but it's also used as a commercial thing. So I think this um, sums it up quite nicely. The community are the ones that actually lead all the projects, um, and it is that simple. So it's, it's down to the people on the ground who have the ability to develop and the engineers, so on and so forth, who start all these um, hundreds and thousands of projects. Um, the two that I've labelled here, you've got Fedora, which is the equivalent to the Red Hat Linux, um, the operating system, and then the JBoss, uh, which is the middleware platform, which is .org, or you've got JBoss.com, which is the commercial version. And it really is a matter of the community will develop Red Hat will take, commercialise, uh, add, the, add the right licences, the certifications of the other vendors to make it stable, secure and usable uh, for, for enterprises um, and gives them the ability to use the software in, in, in the, you know, with, with the belief that nothing is just not going to keep collapsing on them because it wasn't put together by a bunch of hippies who were um, you know, a few steps further on. So, so who actually contributes to open source? Um, there's, I think one of the big myths that floats around is open source is purely done by open source people. Um, some of the biggest contributors are true proprietary organisations such as IBM, Novell, the Linux Foundation, Intel, Oracle. Um, the majority of them I'm sure you all know very well, but they're the, they're the biggest commercial um, contributors. But in real life, as you can see, 32% are just unknown. Because of the fact it's open, we're not really that bothered as to who joins into the community, um, as long as it's good stuff. So, so you know, if you've got some good ideas, go on there and put, put, put your ideas down, and the good ones will actually be incorporated into the bigger solutions. And there is recognition for, for, the, uh, for the good work that goes through. So I won't go into this one too much, because I've just sort of covered it on the other one, but it really shows how you can run two similar projects side by side and actually pump, uh, push them out into the back into the community as the free software or back through into the commercial world as free software again, but then it's the services um, and such likes which, which, which actually have a cost. Um, so what really matters to software adoption, and I think this is one of the key issues um, here today, is why are people moving from proprietary software, standard software that everyone's actually used to, uh, to something, you know, that people don't really know too much about it in this region at the moment. It's to reduce the costs, it's so you can have extra choice, to mitigate the risk of, of you know, um, some of the other solutions you might use, especially with the open source. Um, using a commercial open source vendor um, as, as your partner, that will give you the security within your organisation that you're not going to get sued by everyone else saying you've just stolen my code. Um, so it keeps it quite safe there. And then the vendor lock-in, always a big story. Um, Lots of vendors will actually just try to lock you in. Um, with the likes of, well, Red Hat and every other software vendor that we work with, um, we are not interested in what you have uh, above, beyond, left to right of our solutions, because um, we'll work with pretty much um, every other application or solution that you have in place. Um, and it gives you access to innovation. The Fedora project, JBoss.org, are at the cutting edge of, of where software can actually be. 
it's made um, available to all, all you ladies and gentlemen in here, so it's worth having a look and just having a play. It's a fantastic bit of kit. Um, and I probably shouldn't be saying this, but the majority of our in-house teams actually use .org um, on, on their uh, machines at home, um, even though they should be using the Red Hat Linux version. That's fine. Um, and then just to finish up, where are we at the moment? We're in the middle of probably the worst financial crisis that the majority of us have actually uh, lived through. Um, so there's two ways to look at this now. For, for some software vendors, that cup's half empty. For other software vendors, the cup's, the cup's half full. Um, for open source people, open source vendors, the commercial world of open source, it's definitely a, full cup, a half full cup. Um, lots and lots of um, organizations are looking to open source to actually make better use of their resources, make better use of software, and actually take the software they have to the next dimension and to the next level. Um, so that's pretty much it from, from myself. Cheers. Thank you, everybody.